What's up YouTube? Today we're going to take a look at window functions in SQL, a very important topic which is why I've been holding off on doing this video for a while because I wanted to get it right. So I put together a 10 slide presentation that we're going to go through that contains some of the theory behind window functions as well as a practical example. Now why are window functions important in the first place? They really separate beginners from experts in SQL and especially with how competitive the job market is at the moment, you should really know them by heart. Let's get into the presentation. Now, in terms of window functions, there are really three main categories, first of which being aggregate functions. You might know these from your regular SQL queries. Functions like average, max, sum, count, which allows you to just aggregate multiple column, multiple rows into one output row. You're going to be able to use ranking window functions as well, which allow you to put a rank on a specific entry on a row. You're also going to be able to calculate percentiles or end tiles. And the last category would be values, reading out specific values from the table, depending on the current row you're looking at. So lag or lead allows you to look at the following or preceding column. First value, last value and nth value allows you to look up specific values as well. Now, in terms of window function syntax, you might have seen this before, you're going to use your window function, the ones we've just looked at. Sometimes in parentheses, you can refer to a specific column in your table. You're going to use the over keyword. And now in parentheses, again, you're going to be able to specify partition by a certain column and order by a specific column. Now we're going to use this in an example. You can omit the order by, for example, you can use different window functions in there, but this is going to be your main syntax. And when I get into using a window function, I always write out the entire thing. I'm going to write out, for example, rank over partition by order by, and then I'm going to think about whether I will have to use all of these constructs anyways, because I might not have to use partition by and order by. Anyways, let's get into the difference between group by and window functions because I mentioned aggregate functions and these are the ones you typically use with your group by and they allow you to condense multiple rows into a single row. Now that's what's depicted here. Aggregate functions such as sum average would take multiple rows and give you one output row. Window functions on the other hand look at several rows and give you one row per input row. So if you're looking at three rows you're going to get three output rows. On the other end with aggregate functions you're always going to be left with one output row. Now, another thing we can see looking at this picture is that window functions are still able to consider multiple columns. So for example, the lag and lead, as I mentioned, allow you to look at the preceding and following row. And you typically wouldn't be able to do this that easily without using window functions. And that's where the confusion might happen. So you are able to look at multiple rows but you're still going to be able to, you're still going to be left with just one output row per input row. And as compared to aggregate functions, we have multiple input rows and just one output row. All right, let's get into an example to make this more clear and use the syntax with a practical example. This interview question is called highest salary in department. And our task is to get the highest salary per department and make that part of our output as well as the name of that person and their department as well as the salary. So our input table has a lot of information about employees, including the salary, their name and department. So that's what we're mainly going to look at. And in order to get the high salary per department, we want to rank salaries in each department based on the high salary being on top and then use that rank to filter to only the highest salary. So rank being equal to one. You might have seen that in a few questions if you've gone through my channel, but that's really a very typical example and a perfect example to use here. Let's take a look at the code I've come up with. So let's focus on the subquery here in parentheses, which creates that temporary table rankings. We're going to select a department, first name, salary, the output columns we want in the end. And then we're going to create our window function with that syntax I mentioned. So we're going to use rank as a window function. We have no specific column that we refer to for rank specifically. 
we're going to use our over keyword and then in parentheses our partition by order by statement. So partition by is going to allow us to partition the table by a specific column. In this case, departments. We want to create a window based on the department. And what we're doing basically is creating these windows in the table. So we're creating subsets of the table, looking at each department individually. We want to rank salaries, but per department. So this is going to be a separate window for all departments. And as I mentioned, we want to have the highest salary on top, order by salary in descending order, which means we're going to rank them descendingly. So high salary is going to be on top. That's what we're going to want to end up with. And that should be the rank one then. Now, again, we don't need to specify salary in the rank window function in parentheses behind the keyword rank or the function rank because we are going to specify in the order by clause. And that's going to specify how to create that rank. But yeah, that's how it works specifically for rank. And another window function like sum would require you to specify a specific column that you're going to sum up. Anyways, that's going to be our basic syntax. We're just going to select that from employee. And that's going to give us this output. Department, first name, salary, and the rank called R here in order not to confuse it with the keyword rank or the function rank. I always just call it R. And as you can see, we have someone with rank one in audit, in management, and in sales. This is going to give us rank one, two, two, four. If we were to use the dense rank window function, it would go one, two, two, three. So that, there are subtle differences between these window functions, but these ranking functions really all do the same of creating a rank. Yes, so that's what the subquery is going to give us. Let's get back to the code and see what we do outside of that subquery. We're selecting department, first name, salary, the same columns we have in there because these are the ones we are supposed to have in the output. And we just filter R to one. So we take that table, basically just select the first three columns and filter R to being one without having it in the output. This is going to give us the high salary per department being Chandler for audit, Richard for management and Mick for sales. And it's going to be our, our solution. Now you could also solve this question using max, the max window function. You could use first value if, the, if you have the order, but rank is really the cleanest way to do this because you are going to be able to adjust your solution and say we want the top three, so R is going to be less or equal to three. You are going to be able to just output the second highest salary by saying R is two. And a lot of other questions would strictly require you to use rank. This one kind of gives you the option because it's just the top per department. Now, before I end this video, I wanted to go through some of the main scenarios where you have to use window functions or where you should use window functions. And these are really going to be the keywords for you to look out for in questions that are going to make you realize I should probably use window functions here. So first scenario is top X by Y. That's what we just did. So top salary per department by department, for example, nth highest X. So it might be nth highest salary, second highest salary. You are going to use rank window functions there. Moving averages, cumulative sums, you're just going to use the sum and average window functions. These aggregate functions work slightly differently with window functions. So they just sum up or average up to that point, up to that row, instead of taking all rows, as you would have, as would be the case if you use a regular group by and that aggregate function. You are going to be able to calculate percentiles. That's really the main way to do this using window functions. You are going to be able to look at the previous following day rows day, week, month, it's usually like time-based and often these come up when it, when it comes to user activity and retention. So did that user sign up on the following day? What was the temperature on the following day? Did we have X days in a row? Do we have day five retention or something? Yeah, so you, you would be able to do this using joins as well, but window functions are a nice way to do this. Now, the last scenario, main scenario, I 
wanted to point out is getting the minimum or maximum value for a specific window subset, getting the first and last action of a user or yeah, something event-based. So what's the first action someone did in the last, now the window or the partition would be the user in this case. I had a question on the channel which was about people taking trips and whether they would end up in the same city they started their trip in and that would require us to look at the first action, the first trip they made and the last trip on that whole series of trips. Now that's going to be it for this tutorial. I'm going to leave some links in this presentation. I'm going to link the presentation. Now there are going to be some guides and tutorials I took a look at. There are going to be some problem walkthrough videos for myself and Nate who's working with Strata Stretch and I'm also, going to, I'm also going to link the question that I just went through on Strata Stretch and the problem walkthroughs do refer to that question as well. That's going to be it for me today. See you all in another video. Bye bye.